Howdy y'all, this one is for the ladies. And uh, well, let me start off with who this is gonna be for, which type of ladies this is for. This is gonna be for women who are empiricists, women who are logical and sane. Women who also perhaps like men, uh, you don't have to be enamored with men, but you do like men, you don't hate them. Uh, those of you who want to abide and live within the real world, I wouldn't say Machiavellian, but you are willing, you know the difference between this idealistic left-wing feminist bullshit about you don't need a man, da da da. You may actually like men. You may want a family. You, you want to live a happy life. And you're not going to look to some kind of false religion like feminism or the state and a government check to bring you that happiness. You know that there's another half of the population called men. You know you probably maybe would like to marry one of them. You may want to uh, raise a family, you want to be a mother, and if that's you and, and, and you're, you are, what's the word I'm looking for, not mature, I mean, <clears throat> maturity is certainly one thing, but you are logical enough to know, okay, if I want to have a family, I have to consider men as another, at least half of this variable, how do I go about optimizing my life, and thus what we're going to talk about is cashing in your chips, and the reason why as you're going to see, is, is economics and why this is a very, very, if not the most important economic lesson for women to learn. <clears throat> All right. There are very few things on this planet that all humans or half or more of the entire population needs or demands. Okay. Food, everyone needs food. Everyone needs water. Everyone needs shelter. Um, most people in one way or another need gas or electricity. All right. And you take those things, you take those out of it, and there's not a lot of things left on the planet that has universal demand. Every human needs it, or even half the population needs it. So you take away these universal things that everybody needs, these goods and services, and the only thing that's really left that has such a huge market, uh, where half of the world's population, 3.5 billion people on the planet, have a demand for something, and that is beauty, that is sex, and it is demanded by men. Men want or demand, and there's a difference between, between you know, a necessity, you know, what you're going to get and, and what you demand or want are two separate things, but there is no other larger market except, again, barring gas, electricity, food, clothing, shelter, all that other kind of stuff. There is no other larger market, no other single larger source of demand than men's demand for sex and beauty. Sex and beauty from who? Sex and beauty from a woman. Now, the other thing is that why well, women will come in, well, women like sex just as much as... No, you don't. <laughs> you do not. And that's good for you because that means you have, you're the one in this uh, duopoly that has control. You are arguing from a position of power. And cashing in your chips merely means capitalizing on this position. Right. Now again, feminist leftist, modern day Western society tells you, you go girl, you go get a career, da, 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 da. and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with having a career, and as you'll find out, <clears throat> uh, cashing in your chips does not mutually exclude you from having a career. Quite the opposite. What I'm saying is to do this smart. Okay, So that, that's what we're aiming for, is how do we capitalize on this fact that half the population... From pretty much puberty till death, I mean, little kids don't even know, you know, you're 10 years old, you're sticking snakes in girls' locker, you don't know it. But also in 12, 13, it's like, hey, why do I feel kind of funny about what's on your chest? You know, that all of a sudden from there till death, men demand what you have. So how do you, how do you capitalize this? There's, there's two things uh, where, where it, it's this demand for beauty, okay? One, you need to have it. You need to have beauty, and then two, you need to capitalize on it. So, what does it mean to have it? You damn well know what it means. Don't even act coy or shocked or that you actually, for one second, believe the fucking bullshit that Oprah and all these other sows were telling you on the daytime view shows, okay? Men want, okay, thin. There are very few ugly people. They're very, I mean, have you ever really ran into an ugly person like their face was ugly? It's very rare. If you, if you keep your body mass index down, you stay svelte, you stay slender, you, most people, men and women, will look good. Now, are there some genuinely ugly people? Yes, yes, unfortunately. But for the most part, you work out, you diet, you stay thin. And then the other things that are key to, to having long-term ability to capitalize on this 
is, well, dress nice, present yourself nicely to the public, but above all else, be sane. I'm not even saying be nice. I mean, just, we're happy for sanity right now. Uh, you kind of, because, well, heck, and there's some guys that are so desperate, you know the woman, treat them like shit, and she's hot. The hottest chicks are the meanest one, because every guy, oh, okay, I guess it's all right if, if you want to cancel her date. I mean, they, they, they're just, they're dumb. They're, they're, uh, they're blinded by the woman's beauty that they throw any self-respect and the women get away with murder. So if you can do, like, kind of what, those three or four things, work out, stay thin, dress nice, and be sane, you are going to be so rare and such a highly sought-after commodity. And I, I hate to say it, ladies, that's what it is. I'm an objective. I'm not telling you how it should be according to feminist leftist theory. I'm telling you how it is. That theory, that, that's theory, it doesn't work in the real world. We're talking how it is. So if you are thin, and by default probably attractive, you work out, you diet, you dress nice, and then you're just sane. You are in the top 1% of all Western women. And sadly, it's true. And if you think about it, it's not that much of work. A lot of guys, guys got to go major in petroleum engineering. We got to go build society. We have to learn how to shoot things up in orbit, land things on moons, put things on comets, refine oil. Then maybe we, we get girls. All you girls have to do, all you have to do to have the demand of 3.5 billion men and all their resources being thrown at you, stay thin, be beautiful, uh, be nice, be sane, and dress. I mean, it's not that hard. It's not like getting a doctorate in nuclear physics, okay? So that's it. And you don't have a lot of competition. I know dieting is hard. I, I, look, I hate the gym just as much as anybody else. But I'm saying in the grand scheme of things that you got to do, it's not that hard to cash in your chips or at least have the ability to cash in your chips, all right? Now, the next thing you got to do is you got to capitalize on or actually cash in your chips. And how you do that depends on your age and what stage you are at life. Obviously, you know, <clears throat> women start getting, girls turn into women, what, 13, 12, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I guess it's even younger nowadays. You see the 12-year-old kid who's hit puberty, he's got to shave more than I do. But let's just say uh, 13. Let's just keep it. Teens, teens and up. So what applies at 13 obviously does not apply when you are 30. But it starts when, when you're young. Now, how do you capitalize? Well, you don't really necessarily capitalize right at that moment. You're 13, and a lot of this is going to be unsolicited uh, forms of capitalizing on your beauty. Boys will ask you out on dates. They'll pay for your dates. Um, you'll get better tips if you waitress. Uh, you're just going to get more attention from boys inevitably turning into men. Uh, you should not be terribly worried about that from there's definitely 13 to 18 because um, you, you should be going to school and, and preparing for education and all that. But so like your your K through 12 years, it, it's just take it, you know, okay, you're, you're try not, the key thing there is try not to let that attention turn you into an arrogant, unsufferable bitch, okay? That's, that's what like, attention, yay, everybody loves me, I must be great, I mean, there's a great, oh, I wish I had the guy's video. Maybe I'll find that video, I'll, I'll link to it down below, where girls brought up under this environment are misled to think that they're great, like they personally have done something where it's like, no, you're just tits and ass, and men are programmed to like tits and ass. That's it, They're, you didn't solve cancer, you didn't, you didn't uh, find the Higgins bulls, what's the, the mythical uh, physical particle, whatever. So don't, I guess the only thing to really be there is to stay grounded, not become arrogant and cocky, not let it get to your head because men are throwing attention at it. They just want to have sex. They don't even know that they want to have sex. Kind of they do, but they just like, I'm going to like her. Here's money. Go out with me. It's kind of <laughs> fifth grade, you put eat snakes in the girl's desk. Uh, sixth grade, then you're going and picking flowers. Hi, I feel compelled to give these to you. I don't know why. Want to hold hands? Not this way, the really cool, awesome way. Remember that when you were like, I remember a girl, what was it? I think it was seventh grade. I always held girls' hands like normal, and then the girl did that thing, like where she grabbed my inner lace. I was like, whoa. Well, <laughs> that, that was like third base back in seventh grade. <laughs> All right, anyway. So that's, that's pre-18, pre-adult. 
Now, going forward, you are going to need some form of skill or education. I'm not necessarily saying college, but in today's advanced economy and technology and all that, you do need some kind of skill because your beauty will not be here forever. Additionally, I would like to think that if you're watching this video, chances are you're much more intellectual and much more intelligent than the average person. And you know, deep down inside, you can't just go with what you can, but how fun would life be without an intellectual component or some kind of agency or purpose in life? So yeah, you could just, eh, look, I'm Paris Hilton. I mean, look what happens to Paris Hilton and um, the other train wreck, <clears throat> the Disney gal. She's always on drugs, mean girls chick. Whatever, it doesn't matter. They're, they're now starting to get into their 40s and it's over. Their beauty is starting to go away. So this is a temporary and fleeting thing, but neither of those gals have any kind of intellectual uh, court them. They have no real purpose or agent. Intellectual is what I'm saying. No intellectual stimula stimulation, no career, no thing. So you do need to go either to college or trade school or something. Now, because of the education bubble, uh, tuition is very high. Also, because of socialism, terribly sorry, it's just true, I'm making, a very, I'm making a very simple and short argument that goes into more detail than that. The labor market sucks. So you need to, you know, you, you graduate from high school, you have no money, you, you're not going to command a high salary. Uh, now you got this huge expense of tuition. Well, that's where you start capitalizing. If you are so inclined, and I have nothing but the utmost respect for the women that have done this, it was more my generation, is that you go and you strip. It is, you know, you don't have to actually, some women are okay being a prostitute, but stripping you know, for even though whatever reputation it has, you may find it degrading. The truth is you are capitalizing on your beauty and your looks directly, efficiently, very rapidly. <clears throat> right? I remember slaving my ass off for $6.90 an hour patrolling the U of M fucking campus as a campus cop, okay? <laughs> New looking thing. <band. laughs> fucking 20 degrees below zero. Now you think about that. Do you want to do that or... Dance behind a glass, you know, bulletproof glass cage and have horny men throw money at you. Which one do you want? Okay. I'm not saying these are, there is no ideal solution. But I am saying it's a very direct and quick way to make a lot of money. And I, like I said, I have nothing but the most respect for women who, you know, they pay their way through law school, dental school, medical school. They did it. The key thing, avoid the drugs, avoid the bullshit that's, that's uh, rampant throughout the stripping industry. Um... But you can do it. Now, you don't even have to strip because we have the internet. And now that opens up a whole other thing. Men are desperate. And a lot of men aren't willing to go down to the strip club simply because they can't afford it. So if you look at the business model or the dynamics of a, of a strip club, one guy has to go in, pay a cover, and then you will entertain one guy at a time. Maybe at most six. <clears throat> and each guy is probably going to drop, what, 20 bucks or whatever? St uh, uh, a lap dance. You can only service one guy while you're giving a lap dance. But with the internet, you could go ahead and service millions, hundreds of millions of guys, not have to come anywhere near them, no icky, gross, touchy, no slimy CD strip club. And even though there may be millions and they don't have $20 each to spend on you on a lap dance, they do have one or two bucks. So there are other ways to make money, primarily through the internet. And I'm not even talking porn. Yes, certainly you could do porn. You could set up your own site. Uh, um, oh, what was her? She was like the first, very impressive. Um, Jenna Jameson, there's a perfect example of a gal who was a porn star and then capitalized on starting up her own porn company on the internet. Now, it doesn't have to be that because there's what? Seeking arrangement, there's the sugar daddy sites and all that. That's certainly something you could consider to do. But even, for example, Chloe Love. Chloe Love, she's a, a basically a phone sex operator. I don't even think it's phone sex. I think she just talks to sad, lonely men. Again, capitalizing on her, not even, she is, she is beautiful too. She's very pretty. I've seen her. Um, but she's just got the voice, you know, you don't even have, and so in that capacity, you don't have to maintain your beauty, you just have to have a nice voice. But, uh, was it Fiverr is another perfect example? How many of these cute girls are out there? They're not even, they're not, there's no porn, they're just showing, you know, I'll pose with the sign, you know? I mean, you could get modeling contracts, stuff like that. I would sell yourself directly, capitalize on your beauty by selling your beauty online, set up a website, you know, Amy's house or uh, Trisha's place or whatever it is, you go there, uh, set up your site. You, you're going to make more money, certainly a lot more money than patrolling a fucking university campus at uh, 3 a.m. in the morning. Okay, 
<clears throat> uh, and then finally, this is something that you can do if you can. You are intelligent. You are researched. You have a compassion or a passion for something. Especially if you are libertarian or conservative, you do what's called the old Fox News babe or a Julie Borowski. Okay? If you look on the internet, you forget porn, forget all you have to do is be attractive, thin, and set up a YouTube channel and start spouting conservative or libertarian free market stuff. And you'll have so many guys throwing attention to you. All right? Go look at Twitter followers, YouTube subscribership and all that. Find a girl who's hot and talks conservative talking points. There's like hundreds of them out there. They have way more followers, way more subscribers than I could ever hope to have. If I had simply done things anonymously or written a script and had a hot girl read exactly what I said on all my videos, all my YouTube channels and all, all that other stuff, I would have easily had at least five times the amount of subscribers and therefore five times the amount of money. Even to this day, I know three very good looking, very intelligent, very clever young ladies. I said, dude, and they, and they don't capitalize, they don't pull the trigger. They're afraid because they're, they're camera shy. They're like, well, I don't know, what would I say? I'm like, you just say whatever you want. Find some interesting, make a little, just, just go riff, you know, just have a rant, go talk, whatever. Uh, and they easily, within six months, they'd have more subscribers. So. You know, thankfully, because of the internet, you don't have to resort to what women back in my day did. They had to pretty much strip. If you want to make a lot of money and capitalize on your beauty, it was pretty much just stripping or become an escort or a call girl. Right? Uh, given obvious reasons and danger and STDs and crap like that, you, you, it's obvious why you wouldn't want to do it. But thankfully, now you have the internet where you could do something dirty, quote, as porn, some mid-range, you know, if you want to do the lingerie weekly or whatever or you go the more intelligent route where I think there, there's a huge market for it you do a YouTube or you become an internet personality and you capitalize on your looks and you target a group where beautiful women are typically not there that's usually conservative and libertarian women I'm not, I'm not like, there are pretty conservative and libertarian women there's just not that many women most women are Democrats leftists and socialists okay and they're all hairy and look like shit so you come in there oh you just, you want to talk about really rare and sought after, after commodity. Beautiful, in shape, sane, dresses nice, is nice, and isn't a leftist. I mean, you don't even have to be, because you just have to not be a leftist. It's, and you will, you will uh, make a lot more than old Uncle Cappy here. Then there's your career. Your career, I suggest, it's up to you, it's your life. I suggest if you want to have kids, you pursue your career after you've risen your kid, raised all your kids, up until, uh, what is it, kindergarten or first grade when they go to school? Yeah, five years old, but then it's like half time is kindergarten, so then you gotta go, yeah, so maybe to the first grade. If you wanna have kids, have kids. Okay, we're gonna get to getting a husband later, but for now, addressing the career. Regardless of whether you start your career before you have a family or after you have a family, or maybe I'm both, you start your career, oh, I'm in love, you have family, you go back to your career, fine, fine. If you are, again, good looking, in shape, uh, dress nice, sane, and above all else, reliable, you're not a flake which infects every hot chick in America ever, if you cannot flake out, if you can be that professional, you show up and you work just as hard as anyone else, and you're hot, world's your oyster. You will go so quickly and sail so quickly through the ranks of corporate America, government America, wherever your employer might be, because frankly, people, even women, like to look at better looking people. Think about this, you walk down the street, you probably can tell me about this hot guy you saw, or this really uh, put together woman, or the, this nice um, motif, ensemble, a woman or a guy was like, whoa, it's because our eyes are trained to identify and look at good looking people. Stop and, and look out, try to look at the ugly people. Focus on the ugly people. And you look around and say, holy shit, there's a lot of ugly people. So you are by default gonna have more eyes on you, more attention, not even necessarily sexual, but people are gonna notice you more. They're going to remember you more. And so that is gonna be a huge advantage when it comes time to having a career, getting promoted, getting contracts, all this other stuff. 
But the key thing is you have to be reliable. Again, this operates from the premise, as I said before, you're sane, you have your shit together, you want to live in the real world because you know you cannot live in the not real world. You have to live in the real world. You want to abide by it. If you just honestly, if you can, you can look into me trying to find a model for the silver dollar bikini. It's, it's kind of a, this is what led me to this. But if you are pretty and reliable, Good Lord, better than, you know, you don't, that's better than having your doctorate in neurosurgery, frankly. Maybe not that good, but it's definitely uh, going to help you in your career. Now, inevitably, if you did want a family and you didn't want to fuck it up like the leftists do or like your trailer trash does or your ghetto trash does and you just spread your legs for some loser bad boy or douche on real life. Oh, deadbeat dads, deadbeat. It's amazing how much sex deadbeat dads get. It's amazing how much pussy they get. Actually, it is amazing, I know why, but in either case, we're going to assume again that if you met the criteria of who this video is for, you want to have a nuclear family because you actually love your fucking children and you don't want divorce and you don't want the hell that comes with single parent households or dysfunctional non-nuclear families. So, you are going to have to find a man and this is where you ultimately cash in your chips. If you are a good looking girl, if you are attractive, you're going to have many men throwing themselves at you. But as you are well aware, a lot of men just want to have sex. Some may, they might like and date each other, be like, wow, you're kind of interesting. And then that might go and lead to marriage. But how you're going to discern between guys you just want to fuck and the guy that you inevitably want to marry is it's going to be upon you to once again be sane, be nice, and be an interesting person. Because, yeah, you can, I could find, uh, anyone can hate fuck anybody else. You know, you can't tolerate them, but man, they got a nice body and your genes want to either impregnate or get impregnated by that. All right? So you could hate, you know, let's say you had a visceral hatred for Brad Pitt. I don't know why you would, but let's say you did. You'd probably still, yep, yeah, I'd get banged by him. I'd hate fuck him, but I'd get banged by him. That is not going to lead to a marriage. What leads to marriage or long-term relationships, healthy and all that, is love. And how do you love somebody? Well, you lust after the body, and it certainly does help. Actually, it's a requirement to be physically in shape. But you love that person, and this is why you have to become an interesting person. I have a video, someone want to have a video called How to Be an Interesting Man. It's the same thing for women, more or less. You can watch it. But this is why you would not necessarily go to school to become an interesting person, but you would have something more to, hey, I got titties. You know, you want to be a hobbyist in some capacity or another. You would like to have this interest or that interest. Why I find, uh, whatever it is, you know, don't, don't try and pick something you think is going to be interesting. Pick something for you that is interesting because then you, you'd ha obviously have a passion for it. And you become very professional at it. You, you become very knowledgeable at it. And then you would become a very interesting person just like that. So you must be sane, you must be nice, and then you must be interesting. And then you will find other interesting men, maybe not necessarily in the same hobbies or spheres, but they will have something more to than just fuck. <laughs> I want a fucker. Okay, dumber than rocks, and all of us men have been there. It's like, boy, she's hot, she's great in bed, but God, I want to leave you. If, if the guy's not around, you know, he leaves after the sex, that might be just a hint or a clue. You know, it was just kind of like, let's go get drinks. Not like, hey, let's go for a road trip. If he has you on the road trip, eh, you got something. He has, you got something that he likes, uh, you know. But if he says, ah, oh, let's go to drinks. Eh, come on over, let's watch a movie. Eh, doesn't mean he doesn't like you. Just you know, kind of idea. If you're never invited on like a weekend getaway, there's a clue. So, you become interesting, huh, blah, 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 and all the other pre-requirements. And you have to marry a good man. Does he have to be hot? Yes, I love the, especially the MGTOW movement and not, not, not the real legitimate MGTOWs, but the fake ones. I call them virgin towels. If you want, you can look at There's a group of guys that see all these gals run off with these hot guys, get impregnated, and there they are with their neck beard. See, <laughs> she went out with the bad boy and won't go out with the good guy like me. It's like, dude, you're not physically attractive. It's, 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 you have to be physically attractive you know, to the other person. And so a lot of, I think there's kind of a push or some um, tis tisking going on like, well, you should have married a good man. Well, yeah, you should marry a good man. Obviously, you shouldn't bring kids into the world without a good man. But good man does not mean ugly, reliable guy. 
okay? You need to find a guy who's good looking that you're physically attracted to because that's not an option. It just isn't because you'll go, you'll cheat on him. You'll find somebody else uh, who is a good man, who is a good provider, who will stick around, who has the same values that you do. Da, 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 da. He is not going to be a drop dead gorgeous guy. Terribly sorry. Like women, beauty, or in men's case, handsomeness, uh, spoils them a little bit too. Not so much to the level uh, of women, but men are kind of like, you know, it, it comes easy to one of them. You know. So you want to find a guy, you know, hey, if you can score a 10 and he's a nice, reliable guy, go ahead and do it. But you need to find a guy that's good looking, but has a fucking job, has a fucking game plan. That's another huge thing right there. Like he has a goal. What's your goal? My goal is to be a dentist. My goal is to be a plumber and start my own plumbing company. That's just as honorable. Plumbers make way more than these fucking liberal arts majoring douchebags who are like sipping their cum writing a book. I'm a playwright. I'm going to make it big, man. <laughs> uh, the great Matt Baldoni will yell at me. Preferably not musicians unless they're successful. You know, it's... <laughs> oh, here comes the hate. You need a guy who's got a plan. You need a guy who has agency. He's got a purpose. He's got a mission in life. And he's going to go and do this mission. He's going to do this thing. And he's going to be able to support you and the kids. This is why finance is a huge thing. Right? So you find a guy with a good job. You don't marry him for the money, but it is a factor. Look, and I'm going to catch flack for that. But if you're going to stay at home, you're going to raise the kids, you're going to do it right. And you know what? It could be you're the one. Like, let's say you're a model. You make the money. Well, then the guy probably should stay at home. Whoever makes the most money should not stay at home. That's just, uh, that's just how it is. That person goes work. The other one takes care of the kids. Whatever arrangement you come to, but assume, let's just assume you want to stay home. You need to think about the finances. Is this guy going to support me? I don't think the number one reason divorce occurs is, is the number one troubles is finances. And I knew that was the case in my folks. I mean, it, it was tight. It, being poor does not help. It does not help at all. So you want to find a guy who's employed. It doesn't have to be making a ton of money now. You can always have kids later, but you know, he's got potential. He's got a future. He's interesting. You enjoy his company. I'll say you fall in love. But you just don't fall in lust with some guy. You're like, oh, he's got big muscles. Yeah, cool. If he's got big muscles, yeah. But he's, to marry the guy, certainly to have kids with them, he better stick around, you know? So then, with your beauty, you capture this guy's heart. He's going to, the first thing he's going to judge you by is your looks. Terribly sorry, because you have to. That's the only thing you can really do, is because vision is the quickest sense. He can't judge you by smell unless he gets really close and is blindfolded and can't, you know, she smells nice. And he opens his eyes, oh God, Jesus, put it back. <laughs> oh, where was I going? All right, so you use your beauty and this is kind of like the final thing. If you've done it right, by this time, you will have had college paid for, not have to slave away terribly much during college. You may have had to strip or some kind of internet online thing. You may still have an online video thing, like I do believe Julie Borowski got married. <clears throat> you think she's gonna give up that YouTube channel? Fuck no. Jenna Marble, she might get married. I don't know if she's married. I don't really follow her channel. Uh, you think she's gonna give that shit up? Fuck no. It, it could, with the internet, you could, you know, Whatever website you set up, if you're pretty, you probably are making a lot of money on that. That you may not, you could work from home, you know, be the stay at home mom, making money too. I mean, this guy, but that's ideal. You, the larger point is you will not have student loans or very little student loans because you have capitalized on your looks and your beauty. You will have not waited until you were 40 and got your triple doctorate MBA supermasters in French lesbian poetry studies. To start thinking of a man, you you start to say, oh, okay, after graduation, now I start looking for the husband here a little bit, if you want a family. You found him, you either had kids or you had a career, whatever, it depends. And then by the time you find your man, you'll have college paid for, you'll have a career, maybe even an additional line of revenue of entrepreneurship through whatever online internet thing, if you choose to go that route. And then you finally capture, I hate to use that word, but you find yourself a provider. You marry a good man who provides, all right? And it's done, seriously, you, you'll, you'll get an audience with a quality guy, and it's your personality that will capture him, okay? So guys will date only girls that they're physically attracted to, but for them to stick around, you need that personality, that, that agency, that purpose in life that you're gonna demand from him. If you have that, then you will have, and you don't wait until your beauty is going, because once it's going, it's gone. 
okay? Then you get to look at like 68 year old men and all that other stuff. But if you still wanna have family, good looking husband, young, going out there, being the envy of everybody else, maybe start a family, you're gonna have to start. Definitely looking to get married before you're 30, definitely, okay? I'd say maybe even 25, but you know, life doesn't exactly work out that way. You may not meet somebody. Uh, but still, before you're 30, you know, and certainly before you're 40, kids are out of the house in the school, or you, you have your days open. Maybe your internet thing or your online business, whatever it is, works out. Or maybe you go back to work, uh, you start your career there. Then you and your husband have like uh, the, uh, what are they called? The empty nester. You know, the kids are out, and you're like, hey, double income, no kids. All right. Let's go have sex in lots of different hotels in different countries. Yay! That's what rich people do, or so I'm told. <laughs> so that's how you cash in your chips. Okay, I cannot emphasize enough that there is a limit, a finite time to this. You have to do it probably 30 or before. This this plan must be executed. All right? You can keep yourself in pretty good shape post 30. I'm not saying there's a, you know like you know one day you're 29, the next day you're 30, and men are vomiting upon seeing your face. Uh, but it, it, it's uh, you're starting to lose your cachet, your beauty, your chips are starting to fade, and you have to cash them in. So, I know this is terribly politically incorrect. I know this isn't what you wanted to hear. It's what you needed to hear. And I know that this is, I'm an evil, bigoted, misogynist, sexist, woman hater, and it's just patriarchy trying to look at those people who make those criticisms and accuse me of that and ask yourself two things. Are they married and do they look happy? And we find out the answer is usually no. And say, do I want to be an unhappy, angry, middle-aged woman with growing... They're even dying their fucking armpit hair. You hear about that? Uh, anyway. So, very important economic lesson. I'm sorry, and certainly don't think that your only value in life is based off of your looks. All right? Certainly you become an engineer, a dentist, a doctor, and, and you would have just as much demand for you in a... Um, in an employment capacity or professional capacity. But you're never, ever going to have half the world's population want to throw money at you more than from the ages of uh, more like 16 to about 30. You got 14 years to work with there. Make a count. Toodles.